artificial intelligence has been a very, very popular topic in the past few months, thanks to kind of platforms like OpenAI's ChatGPT, DALI, and some other kind of generative AIs that have come out to the consumer world in the past few months. So what I want to do in today's episode is take a closer look at five companies that I believe can benefit from this kind of huge push in artificial intelligence. I do want to say the five companies we're going to look at today also have other aspects, so they don't need this huge push of AI, but I do believe they can benefit greatly from it if this is a market that we're going to see continue to grow. And personally, I don't know if because I'm a huge kind of tech guy, I do believe this is a market we are going to continue to see strong strength in the upcoming years. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I do want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and make sure to check out fool.com slash Jose to get the top 10 stocks to buy right now. All right. So the first company I'm going to take a closer look at is Advanced Micro Devices, AMD. Uh, this, as you guys know, I'm a huge semiconductor guy. And at the end of this episode, I am I'm going to kind of talk about all these companies and which I prefer in from our price points. Some of these might be a little bit too volatile at the moment that maybe they're not on the top of my list at the moment. So I'll share that later on. So advanced micro devices, like we all know, AMD is a huge semiconductor company. Semiconductor companies are pretty much needed for their processing power and needed for artificial intelligence. They provide numerous solutions in the data center market, like CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, DPUs, and adaptive system on chips in the embedded market as well. So again, this is pretty much the power needed to deal with all these computational needs that we're seeing in the artificial intelligence world right now. So I want to say this is probably one of my favorite plays. We've also seen recently that AMD announced the world's first integrated AI engine on an x86 processor. So he'll say, what does this mean? So AMD creates a lot of processors for the consumer market. You see them in your laptop, you see them in your desktop. What they're doing now is they're creating this hardware or, or adding a hardware to their processors that are dedicated for AI workloads. And the reason they are doing this is because it would overall help with performance. And they are also seeing kind of the market increasing with providing AI solutions. I will explain some of the AI solutions we have in the market right now, but we can see AMD is trying to get in front of the world by already kind of adding this dedicated hardware to their processors. Here, they kind of show some examples of how AMD Ryzen AI can help. First, we can see that dedicated hardware is allows for multitasking possible in the AI workloads. So overall, just increase the overall performance. With AI, you can do things like increase battery life, increase kind of the overall experiences in some of the apps like Microsoft Team and Zoom. And these are apps that us, the consumer, use almost on an everyday basis. All right, so the second company is going to be Microsoft. And Microsoft has been very, very popular recently, especially after they announced they're extending their partnership with OpenAI through a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment to accelerate AI breakthroughs. Microsoft did mention that they will deploy open AI models across their consumer and enterprise products and introduce new categories of digital experiences built on open AI technology. There are also reports that Microsoft Bing is going to start using open AI's chat GPT model to help with the overall search engine. So we can see Microsoft is definitely in the forefront of this investment. Most recently, on February 1st of 2023, Microsoft announced some of their new AI power productivity solutions that they've added to Microsoft Teams. Here, for example, they mentioned that Microsoft Teams will have intelligent recap using the kind of AI breakthrough that they have right now. It would allow to automatically generate meeting notes, recommend tasks, and personalize highlights to help you get the information most important to you, even if you missed the meeting. So here we can see some of the suggested notes that were kind of created. It. You can also kind of get AI generated chapters to divide the meetings into different sections, depending on what the user was talking about. Speaker timeline markers, which pretty much just lets you know who was speaking at what time. Again, we saw that AI generated notes to see, hey, someone during the meeting might have said a great thing to do in the upcoming weeks would be to work on this project at this 
particular time. So AI would generate that note and kind of put it on the note and say, work on this project at this specific time. They also have kind of live translations for captions. So now available in Teams Premium, you get AI powered real time translations from 40 spoken languages. Again, this is just the early phases and I do believe we're gonna continue to see this improve as the years progress. I mean, even prior to ChatGPT, we see here on June 13th of 2022, AI was being used for voice quality improvements, kind of removing echo cancellation, removing any background noise suppression, improving the overall video quality. Uh, so things like this have been used. We are just starting to see these use cases increase over time. On February 2nd of 2023, Microsoft mentions that they are boosting Viva sales with new GPT seller experience. Viva sales will now generate suggested email content for a variety of scenarios such as replying to an inquiry or creating a proposal complete with the data specifically re relevant to the person receiving the email such as pricing promotions and deadlines another way we saw on october 12th of 2022 that microsoft was bringing dali which is the image generative AI to their solutions in cloud, right? It's only an invitation only, but again, we continue to see how Microsoft continues to grow this AI solutions in both the consumer market and in their enterprise and business space. So the third company we're gonna take a closer look at is Nvidia, and you guys know how I'm a huge fan of the semiconductor market. And if you are enjoying the episode so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up as it does help me grow my overall audience. If you wanna support a little bit more, make sure to check out my link at fool.com slash host say finally make sure to check out my semiconductor podcast semiconductor only news we do talk about things like artificial intelligence there the link is down below or should be up here in one of the links above all right so the third company is nvidia and we start off right now nvidia has this unified platform it provides the hardware like gpus cpus in the upcoming grace that they are expected to release later this year and the dpu again these are the hardware needed for all these computational power outside of that they also kind of create this AI infrastructure solution. If you pretty much just want to build some form of supercomputer, which are needed for uh, AI workloads, you can just go to NVIDIA and kind of purchase a purposely built supercomputer already. And I do believe this AI infrastructure is a huge, huge growth opportunity for NVIDIA. Here, they also have a lot of networking solutions outside of those that I mentioned, which are more in the computational space. They also have different networking solutions thanks to their acquisition of Mellanox. But outside of that, they also do have a lot of software solutions. And this is what I believe NVIDIA has amongst all the other semiconductor companies first they have the hardware second they have the infrastructure and third they tie it off with the software solutions that they have they have numerous software suites that help with things like intelligent virtual assistants audio transcription digital fingerprint for security again numerous numerous natural languaging training purposes as well so huge huge push here in my opinion in the software side from nvidia we can see here if you follow nvidia they do have a blog in the newsroom where every week i believe they share about a startup company and how they're using some of nvidia's ai software to start these new companies i do believe that's a great read because it kind of shows you how this market can continue to grow i also did a video earlier of a swedish university that's improving their supercomputers that they're using for numerous artificial intelligence workload so again not only big data centers universities and a lot of kind of educational labs use artificial intelligence to continue to learn more about their field here we also saw on february 2nd of 2023 that nvidia's a100 which was their previous generation aces throughput latency results in key inference benchmarks for financial service industries and i want to say this is pretty interesting because normally when we think of ai we think things like recommender systems for videos or advertisement platforms or kind of like weather prediction models or languaging stuff but we can see how the financial service industry also needs to improve their technology with artificial intelligence now the fourth company here is meta platforms and i do believe meta platforms is one of my favorite this is one that i've talked about numerous numerous times in the past even though it is a social company they are a very very big tech play i do believe they have a strong engineering team for example the new ai powered feature is designed to improve feed for everyone it, uh, meta had to kind of shift the way they recommend ads now they're more 
I want to say artificial intelligence driven, where back then your recommender feed was only people you follow. Now it's not only people you follow, but things the AI thinks you might enjoy. And that has helped with the overall engagement in the platform and has really helped Meta grow in things like their video reels uh, to battle the likes of TikTok and YouTube shorts. Outside of that, though, Meta has other kind of generative AI. They have, for example, make a video where if you just kind of write a text, it can make a quick video clip of that text that you wrote which i think is pretty impressive they also have kind of make a scene i believe is called where you can write a text and it will create an image out of that text the reason a meta hasn't really released this to the public right now is it's kind of expensive to run all these ai generative solutions so they're trying to find the best way to use them. One of the use cases for Meta in their AI is they are a huge advertisement platform, but sometimes as an advertiser, you might not have the budget to kind of get a graphics design or an advertisement company. So using open, uh, so using Meta's AI generative solutions, you might be able to make an eye pleasing advertisement with very little money and can help kind of improve the conversion of your ads. So during the earnings call, this most recent, Mark Zuckerberg mentioned that, hey, generative AI is very important and it's something their team has developed and they will announce more solutions in the upcoming months. The only thing or one of the major problems for Meta is right they have over billions of users and kind of giving this out for free might not be the best move so they're trying to find out how to make this where it can overall improve the company's revenue at the same time now the last company i have here is cloudflare this is ticker net this is a cdn a content delivery network company and we can see most recently cloudflare partners up with nvidia to bring ai to its global edge network they do mention that hey machine learning models are often deployed on expensive centralized servers or use cloud services that limit them to regions around the world nvidia and cloudflare are changing that the combination of nvidia's accelerated computing technology and cloudflare's edge network enables developers to leverage a massive platform run machine learning out at the edge use familiar tools enable high performance and this is something that's very very important and i feel something that gets overlooked uh, so i do believe cloudflare even though it's a very popular stock it has been overlooked in the past few months due to the overall market here we see earlier on on 2021 that Cloudflare was bringing AI to the edge with NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, this kind of helped combat bots or kind of attacks on certain websites uh, and make sure that everything is running pretty, pretty smoothly. I mean, for example, one of the popular companies, Chat OpenAI, with their Chat GPT, is being run at least that we know by Cloudflare. If you're trying to uh, join in here and maybe too many users are coming at once, they might be checking for bot detection. So I, I know in the back and they are using cloudflare they could also be using another cdn some of these companies usually end up using more than one cdn but cloudflare is definitely one that's kind of being there and we know chat gpt has grown its users dramatically in the past few months and most of these companies pay on a usage base so cloudflare could definitely be benefiting from this and if generative ai continues to grow it can definitely see a nice boost of revenue for companies like cloudflare so like I mentioned earlier, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about the price points. I think in forms of growth, Cloudflare is probably one of my favorite at the moment. It hasn't run up too, too much in the past uh, in the past few months. Cloudflare is on my top of the list. I would say second would probably be advanced micro devices. I'm a huge fan here in the semiconductor space. I want to say third would probably meta and microsoft i don't think i can pick one or the other last would be nvidia i i do believe nvidia has kind of run up the stock price a little bit too much in the in such a short time that the volatility is here uh it is going to be strong for for nvidia so we might start to see some strong movements on the downside at the end of the day i do believe all five companies in my opinion are great for dollar cost averaging i just want to say the one that i believe would be the most volatile would be nvidia the two i enjoy right now in forms of price points i want to say would be amd and cloudflare but all of them are ones i would enjoy at a dollar cost averaging method so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode take care have a good day and see you next time